Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the top five books that I have used as a computer engineering student and the books that I think you are going to be using as well. So let's get started. So I'd say the first book that I use the most and have used like pretty much through all four years of my college degree as a computer engineering student was um, Essential Calculus by Jane Stewart, I think. Um, I'll put it right here, but I used that book freshman, sophomore, and junior year of my degree, mainly because we had to take Calculus 1, 2, and 3. And for all of those courses, we used that same book. So my professors pulled the problems and the resources and the information from that book, and I would just continue on to the next chapter uh, when I would go into Calculus 2 or Calculus 3, it was, just, um, it was just one large book that had all Calculus 1 through 3 in it. And that's why um, I had used it the most for my undergraduate degree. So I'd suggest looking at that book if you're thinking about majoring in engineering. And it's not just computer engineering, it's just engineering in general. You'll most likely be using that book. I'm sure there are other students out there who are selling their books and you can probably just get it for a cheaper price. So that's number one, and it's probably the most important book. The second book I'd suggest is the C programming language. I had used this book quite a bit. Um, I didn't really refer to it very much. It's just my professors said that these were the books that they were using, um, especially in the programming classes that I was in for um, C, C++. They had had these books as a list of required textbooks, but really I just looked it up on the internet and I kind of found some information about C++ or if there was a homework assignment that involved programming, then I would just kind of look that up. I didn't really actually refer to the book, um, but you know, you can always use the book. They didn't, the professors that I had anyway, they didn't have um, problems pulled from that book specifically. So I didn't really need it, but it is, you know, nice to have. The third one that I used a lot was CMOS Integrated Digital Circuits or Digital Integrated Circuits. I used this a lot for my Electronics 1 class, mainly because the professor had pulled problems from there and had asked us to solve the problems from the book. Um, initially they had given us, I think a week or two kind of grace period where they, you know, gave us the problems from the book. And then after that, we had to buy the book or rent it, however we were to obtain it and do the problems that way. But that's the third thing. I used that book a lot and that was for Electronics One, like I said, and that was about it. If you're a computer engineer, you probably won't need it very much because we only used it for that one class. Uh, but if you're an electrical engineer, you might want to use it more. You probably use it a lot more, um, especially since you have to take Electronics 1 and Electronics 2. But it all depends on the professor as well. I mean, my professor just happened to be using that book and pulled problems from that book. Other professors may not do that at all. So the fourth book that I have been using a lot and most recently um, has been Computer Networking, a top-down approach. So that book involved you know, networks, of course, computer networks, but it was mainly the book that I used the most because it's kind of, there's not very many books out there about networking and it's kind of a new field, a new subject. And so this book has been pretty much the only one that I've been using and my class has been using the past two years, I think, um, since I've gotten further along into the networking track. So again, that depends on the person. If you decide you wanna go down the network track, then um, as a computer engineer, then you can do that and I'd suggest this book, but if you're going down like the, the hardware track and you're going into FPGAs or and or gates or anything of that nature, uh, then you probably won't ever use the networking book or need it. Uh, but again, it's it all depends on your preference. And now the last book I'd suggest is Introduction to Algorithms. So this book had a lot of useful information mainly because we had to take as a freshman and sophomore computer engineer, even electrical engineers, we all basically have the same courses. And I think engineers in general would take all these um, math courses and it involves algorithms. So it has been very useful. Um, things like, it had things like binary trees, search trees, um, optimization. I had taken other courses, I think spring 2017, and it was, advanced mathematics for engineers and 
we used a lot of algorithms in that class. And I think another one, we did take a specifically a algorithms course. Um, if you watch one of my previous videos, I go over the list of courses that I had taken, but um, one of them, I'm pretty sure, was just a class about algorithms. So this book was for that, and my professor had used this as like a required textbook. Uh, granted, he never actually gave us any problems from there or pulled any problems from there, but he did refer to it a lot of the times, like his lectures were based off of this book. These, I'd say, are the most fundamental and probably would be used the most as a computer engineer. So I would actually suggest two additional books, mainly just from experience and what I've learned and what I've been doing, especially now as an intern. Um, they're not books that I had used or had been required or anything like that as a college student, but I have noticed that I've been using the information in these books in the workplace or as an intern in my projects and stuff like that. So the first one is Machine Learning with Skykit Learn, and I'll put it right here. It's with Python language, and the reason why I'd suggest this book is because I had taken a machine learning course and he didn't really suggest anything, but it has all of the information on how to actually do machine learning programming with Python. So not only would you be able to learn and understand how Python the language is and works, but you'll also know how to implement machine learning in Python. Um, and it's also very helpful because I do know that machine learning is becoming more and more prevalent in the workplace and in technology and just everywhere in general, machine learning is, is growing. So with artificial intelligence and all that stuff with IOTs, it's becoming more and more um, important. And I think it's something that students should definitely focus on, especially as they are getting their degree. When I was an undergraduate, we didn't take any machine learning courses. So this course that I had taken, this machine one, was as a graduate student and it was an optional course. It wasn't mandatory or required or anything like that. But I do believe that machine learning should be and might or probably will be a required course for computer engineers, computer science people, and maybe even electrical engineers because it's just that uh, it's just that important, you know, it's, it's just growing. So that's the first one. The second one, the additional textbook I'd suggest is Linux Programming Interface. And this is only because as a computer engineer, um, from what I've experienced, I've been using Linux and Unix uh, operating systems a lot, especially with virtual machines. And there's been a large learning curve for me anyway, it's taken me a long time to understand how the Unix system works and how the Un Linux system works, um, mainly because I've always been using Windows when I was a student. But now in the workplace as an intern, I've been using a lot of Unix and I've been having to learn the basics and it was just a huge learning curve. So I'd suggest, you know, if you ever have the chance or if you're interested in it, to get that book, mainly because you'll probably most likely be using it um, in the future, especially if you're a computer engineering student. If you're electrical engineering, I, I highly doubt it. And same with computer science, maybe computer science as well, but I'm not too sure. I do know that computer engineers, they we should definitely learn that and learn that area in that field. So yeah, those are the top five books and plus the two additional ones that I suggest that you should probably take as a computer engineering student or just as an engineering student in general. Those are just the fundamentals. Those are the ones that I read from a lot as an undergraduate student. So, I mean, it's up to you. Like I said, it all depends on the person. Um, but yeah, so if you guys like this video or if you found it useful, um, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you'd like me to go into detail in one of these books, let me know. And if you like the video, then please like and subscribe and share it if you want to. And thanks for watching. Bye.